Hello, welcome to another episode of Ask Diablo Shade with your host Diablo Shade LCSW, and I'm bringing you guys a new episode. First of all, welcome back to my channel uh, where mental health meets the millennial. But as y'all see, I'm not here by myself, okay? I brought a guest today. So we are upgrading here mm -hmm. on Ask Diablo Shade. So I'm going to let my guest introduce himself to you guys. And then we'll get started with our topic for today. All right, everybody. My name is Carl Randolph. Thank y'all again. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to her YouTube channel. It's going to be great. It is great. It's phenomenal. If you haven't already done so, subscribe. Like I said before, Carl Randolph, 26 years young. Memphis, Tennessee, of course, father of two beautiful daughters. And yes, I'm here to shed light from a male's perspective on her channel on some different topics that we feel are important to discuss in our community. So, that yeah. was a good little intro. Thank you. Okay, yes, okay. All right, sorry, ladies, he's already chosen up. So, <laughs> but hopefully the advice he gives us today yeah. will, you know, help us in our dating journey because the title of today's topic is called A Dating, dating Crisis. crisis yep. Yeah. Because why, why is it such a crisis? Like, why? It's 2019, and I feel like dating is getting harder. Like, it is getting harder. Definitely for y'all. Definitely ooh, for y'all. Why? For because it's like, it's like we know that, you know what I'm saying, there's more, there's so many women that's looking to settle down and get married. We see that all the time, social media, the statuses, mm -hmm. versus, and the men, we know that. We know there's not a lot of good brothers out there, and we see that. You know, Sometimes it's we can choose. Y'all got, we we got more options than y'all do. But yeah, it's, it is a crisis. It Sorry. is. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, you know, discuss this. So hope, hopefully, what I say can help some other women as well as men. Mm -hmm. And you know, hopefully, we just end up shedding some light on this. So right. the first part of our topic is we're gonna discuss images um, growing up, like how black love, we'll say, was depicted. So you know, mm -hmm. I used to love to watch the Cosby Show. Right. You know, sorry about Bill Cosby and what he got going yeah. on, but I'm, you know, I'm just gonna think about Cliff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's who I watched. So Cliff, mm -hmm. um, Fresh Prince, right, for um, sure. Uncle Phil, right. okay, first thing first, rest in peace, Uncle right, Phil. Rest. So mm -hmm. I saw like healthy love as far as between a man and a woman right. without, I guess, the woman having to diminish herself or diminish her life in right. order to have a healthy relationship because, you know, Cliff was married to law school, babe, right. you know, okay, right. and then we had, you know, Aunt Vivian who did her own thing, mm -hmm. you know, so women could still be strong and have stronger men and True. now I feel like... It's, I, like, it's not more, possible now. It's like, I've, what I've seen first, it's almost like a competition in relationships. It's like, I've seen brothers in relationships be in a competition with that woman. And it, it's, it's really weak. I don't want to curse, but it's really some I it's mean, some weakness. We it's real weak it's when you in a relationship <laughs> when, when with somebody and then you like in an unhealthy competition with them. It's like, you trying to outdo her, she trying to outdo you. And the girl will talk bad to her guy in some cases where she'll, you know, call you to be weird if you express yourself and the dude yeah. trying to diminish his woman and talk back to her thinking that it's sex when it's really not. It's a whole bunch of messes going on, but it's it's just, it's really just crazy. I think yeah. about, did, like, watching those couples on TV, did that mess up, like, how we think relationships? Like, did it romanticize relationships? Because I thought it was going to be like that when I got in a relationship. And True. It, it is not being as easy as it looked. No, it's not. I think that we all grew up seeing the same things, like you said. We all saw, you know, the Cliff and Claire Hux, but we all saw Fresh Prince Bel Air. A lot of us saw Martin, like myself. I grew up seeing Brandon Mack show, and I think all of us, yeah, a lot of us saw how relationships were depicted uh, on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, a lot of us did not have our fathers there, or a lot of us didn't have our mothers there in some mm -hmm. cases. And I think that although we grew up seeing some positive, you know black relationships, mm -hmm. I think that our personal relationships that we had with our parents also uh, kind of influenced how we perceive relationships as we got older, whether we had an abusive you know, father, whether we had an alcoholic mother or whatever the case may be. If we never physically saw, I know we all saw it via you know, the television, but if we, I feel like a lot of us, if we didn't see it firsthand, we really just didn't know. And we kind of flocked to what our peers Mm -hmm. Sort of like, because we're habitual creatures. We're creatures of habit. So it's like, Learned if we behavior. saw, if brothers saw, okay, their peers talking bad about women or doing this, how many girls you've been with, slept with, la, la, la. Mm -hmm. He could have been a virgin, but to be not the awkward one in the group, he went out and tried to start, start too young type thing. The same with women. But I can only speak for the guy's perspective. I can't 
Did you you for the women. I'm speaking on the guys' part of the house. Yeah, and so if I'm thinking, like, just going off that, we saw Mm -hmm. um, those relationships. I'm trying to think about even now how I saw a relationship in my family. Okay, Mm -hmm. so my parents were married, but they got divorced. Okay. Um, And outside, I had one cousin um, that was married, that's still married to her husband. Mm -hmm. And then I had, like, a great aunt that passed away that still um, was married. Outside of those three relationships, I have never mm-hmm. seen anyone in my family like married or mm-hmm. really in healthy relationship. Right. So that kind of molded me. I guess that set my footsteps in how I was going to get in relationships right. because I didn't have it around me. So although, like I said, I had it on TV, I didn't really have it in real life. Right. Okay. And see, I like how you say that because like myself personally, like I saw my mother growing up, you know, typical story mother, single mother of three kids for the longest, and then she got married. Mm -hmm. But in that marriage, I saw a lot of things that I told myself that I would not do Mm -hmm. when it was my turn to be the head of my household. Mm -hmm. Uh, My mother always put us first. Um, She never put, we never felt like a a man was put over us, even in the marriage. Um, But from from what he did, my stepfather, for what he did Mm -hmm. and what I experienced, we didn't have a healthy relationship. We didn't bond together, so that was an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the first person that I'm associating myself uh, with is, you know, father-son relationship type, and we didn't have a real relationship. Uh, it left me in a position as a young man. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out what my manhood was. I'm trying to figure out, you know, when is it okay for me to express myself? When is it okay for me to not be okay? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what do I have to do to get the words, hey, I'm proud of you type thing, mm. you know, because no one ever told me that, you know, growing up. So I'm like, okay, maybe if I join the military, like I did, mm-hmm. maybe once I become a father, which I am, maybe when I graduate college, something magical will happen where I'll get that affirmation from a, another male that's significantly older than me, like, hey, mm-hmm. I'm proud of you. Right. And, you know, it just, it kept getting frustrating. But, you know, for me, it's like, I grew up seeing everything that I didn't want to be. I heard my mother say, hey, he's not you know, paying the bills mm-hmm. or, you know, he's not handling his business. So I told myself growing up, I'm going to make sure I romance my woman. I'm going to make sure Amen. that my woman does, her mind doesn't want, I'm going to make sure I be the best man I can be. I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. But through seeing somebody fail, I told, I told myself growing up that when it's my time, I'm going to succeed. So I think that for me mm-hmm. personally, seeing somebody do the wrong thing made me want to do the right thing, if that makes sense. Men listen up. Yeah. Say it again, okay? Yeah. Seeing them do the wrong thing. Made them want to do, do the right thing. thing. He didn't use excuses mm-hmm. to, you know, say that I'm going to do bad behavior because I had all these excuses. So, yeah. you know, just pick up, you know, each one teach one. Each one teach All one. right. <laughs> so, now we're going to get into, like, our personal experience. Okay. With relationships, hosting, right. you know, everything in TV and everything in our real life. So, if y'all yeah. are not, or y'all are new to my channel, okay? Mm. Um, I have been married before and I am divorced. So, I have a three part series. You can find it on my page, uh, My Marriage and Divorce Story. And you kind of, you know, go through that little dark spot in my life. <laughs> so, um, and I won't be super long with this. My experience was I definitely mimicked my parents' relationship. My Mm -hmm. dad was in the Air Force. Um, My mom married him. They married quickly. And and that was, you know, after knowing each other, just how kind of military people will do. Right, right, (laughs) right. We will do that. So, listen, but then benefits, though. Yeah. (laughs) So, they ended up getting married. They had my brother, who was older than me, because my mom had a a child, my oldest brother, from a past relationship. And then she got married to my dad, had my brother, my second brother, and then they had me. So, um, I saw a lot of dysfunction. You know, they were just, they stayed together for the kids. Mm. And then when my parents divorced, uh, I personally just didn't. My mom was very vocal about how what was going on in her relationship with my dad. I didn't necessarily see it, but mm-hmm. it made me have a like an idea yeah. of how I saw my yeah. dad. So yeah. I, I didn't try to have a relationship with him. So cutting him out of my life at a young age, which I definitely did not need to do, but it's what I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up searching for this like love of uh, meeting this significant other mm-hmm. to fill this void, you know. So I meet this guy in high school, high school sweethearts, y'all know those, mm-hmm. and decided at 18 that, you know, let's go get him here. He's, he decided to join the army, you know. I didn't even realize. I literally was living out my parents, yeah. like reliving it. Like the yeah. apple don't fall too far from the tree. Okay. Um, long story short, um, it did not work out. Um, we were definitely too young to have gotten married. We did not know ourselves, let alone could learn each other. So it was just, it was detrimental from the beginning. It wasn't going to work. So after about a year, 
of being married, year and a half, um, we both decided that it wasn't going to work, mm -hmm. and we went our separate ways. But it was like, after that, I took a step back on dating. I was like, I'm not going to do I'm done. Because I didn't want to, I was like, I'm not going to be my parents. I'm not going to stay in some 10, 14 years yeah. and then leave. I was like, yeah. I'm good, love, enjoy. We ain't got no kids. I'm good. But mm -hmm. mentally, it impacted how I saw men. You know, I had this, like, strong dislike for black men for a while. I love my kings now. But, you know, I went to this place of being mad at God. Like, you tell us to get married and you, you say this is what we're supposed to do. And I did it. And mm -hmm. I married this person who didn't value me, who didn't value my worth i didn't value my work so i i wasn't dating for a while yeah, you know i was yeah. very just anti man it's yeah. love i'm not but i had to realize i had to work through some traumas um from my childhood and work through you know the getting past the divorce because i had to grieve it i think sometimes we feel like or we don't realize that the loss of a relationship is just equal to death. Like, you still mm -hmm. have to grieve the loss. It's still a loss. You still have to grieve it. It's, a, it's like a resurrection every time you see that person. So I would see that person at school and see that person. And it was just like a reliving yeah. of that we weren't together no more. That no. we were divorced. So, that, get, get your healing. So, get I went and healing. got my healing. So, now I'm in a better place. Um, it was 18. I'm 28 now. So, that was almost 10 years ago. So, you know, okay. it's... It shapes how I know when I do get in my second marriage, because I do believe I will get married again. Mm -hmm. Um, that it's I, I know how I can be healthy in that relationship because although I felt, you know, I can be honest and accountable that yeah. I wasn't that I wasn't healthy in that relationship either. So now I know, okay, how to do this, how to treat a man man need respect. You know, it's just a lot of qualities that I had to groom myself going through that process. So it wasn't yeah. the worst process in the world. You know, I end up getting better afterwards. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. As long as you get better, that's Listen, all that matters. Just laid it on the altar. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, what about you? So how was your personal experience with relationship? Okay, I want to say for me, my personal, my personal, my personal experience, excuse me, with relationships started when I was like in high school. That's when I started taking them serious. I've always been what my mother would consider me as a woman's man. But that's what my mama say. I just grew up with a bunch of women, my so I, I catered to the emotional needs of, of women. I know how to talk to women because that's all I had growing up, my mm -hmm. sister. So uh, most times that's how it be. You know, if you have a, a son that's used to growing up, you know, with a single mother or mm -hmm. that had a bunch of sisters, he probably the same way as well. But for me, um, my first real relationship was in college. I was with this young lady. We were together for about three years, and it was a beautiful relationship. It started from uh, me sliding into the DM, uh, but I didn't stay consistent. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful relationship. We had our ups, we had our downs. We learn a lot about each other. But what I learned most about myself and one of the character flaws that I had to fix mm -hmm. uh, within myself is that I had a lot of passive aggression that I had built you up over the years. Petty. I was real. Now, I, I want to say, I don't want to say petty. I don't want to say shady, but it's like, cool. it's like I didn't know how to properly and uh, effectively express myself mm -hmm. nor channel my anger that had built up over the years for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Like me, I always thought of myself as, as being I'm gonna go ahead and say the word. Like I always thought that I was the weak one of the bunch of my peers. Like I thought, just the same way that I can imagine. I don't know, but the same way that some women feel like, oh, I'm not a certain skin tone, or if I'm not a certain uh, body shape, or if I'm not a certain, uh, if I don't have to talk a certain way, or dress a certain way, that I'm not gonna be found attractive by, the, you know, the opposite sex or whatever you you want to, to attract you or whatever. I men sometimes think the same thing. I can't speak for nobody else, only for myself. I used to think that oh, if I didn't have all the muscles, if I didn't, if I wasn't over six feet, because I'm like five eight, you know what I'm saying? I thought that I would be just looked over. I'm just right. being honest. So like all of the all of the years that I kind of was this, because dudes get this, we get turned down. You know, you gotta take an L and keep it moving. Uh, for all the years that I'm like I, that, I was looked over. You know, when it came my time to be in a relationship, I've built up this persona within myself. Oh, I'm a good dude. So with that mindset, oh, I know I'm a good dude. I'm thinking you ought to act, to treat me a certain way, and I think that you ought to ought to act the same way as well. Like assuming. And, like assuming. Like it's like mm -hmm. I'm expecting one one type of behavior in a situation. That if it doesn't play out that way, I'm thinking that you just totally disrespected me. Like, and that's what I thought back in the day. I was like right. 19, and how 20. Did you communicate that when you felt disrespected. Now, whew, child, back in the day, what I did, I was, you know, it could be something as small as. I had company at my apartment, college, college environment. I had company, and you didn't say hey to them when I said hey to them. I didn't say nothing then, but I would have an attitude with you later, and probably I didn't know how to express that. Mm. So I'd just be mad to you, wouldn't talk to you, wouldn't call you for a day. And that mean a lot in college, you know, mm. you with somebody. Or just something small like that, but that's when you petty. 
when you sweep stuff under the carpet and don't address it mm -hmm. effectively and properly, it, it becomes passive aggressiveness and it sometimes can cross the line and turn into physical abuse. Mm -hmm. It can turn into emotional, emotional abuse. abuse. Uh, I want to go ahead and say mental abuse as mm -hmm. well. Oh, yeah, and, good. you know, I've learned through the years, check yourself before trying to check somebody else. Like, I can only hold myself accountable. You can only hold yourself accountable as a man. You cannot control what your woman does, mm -hmm. but what you can control, what you can control is yourself, and you can make sure that you take initiative as men should. Mm -hmm. It ain't always about the money. Mm -hmm. Going to that next, um, take initiative and treat her how you expect to be treated. Mm -hmm. Treat her nice. You know, it doesn't mean that she match you tick for tech, but if I open up the door for you and take you out to dinner, all I want you to do, and, and you know, to match that, is just say thank you. Just a simple thank you will put you above all other women, ladies. Some women don't even do that. But advice. I'm telling you. And like, as far as the money thing too, um, I as I got older, fast forward out of college, now I'm in my twenties. Um, I had a daughter at a young age. I had my daughter when I was about 22, 20, 22 going into twenty three. It's like a super young. Yeah, it's it's not. I was graduating college, and mm -hmm. uh, you know. This was right after the girl that I had dated for three years in, in college. Oh, so it's not the same person. No, not the same person. Okay. So this is the individual that I dated right after that relationship somewhat mm -hmm. ended or was fixing to end. And I want to tell on myself and be open and honest because I know that if I went through it, a lot of other men I know have went through it. Mm -hmm. And some brothers might be going through the same thing now. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes I had got caught up in the physical you know, ram of trying to please my flesh mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of the three-year relationship. So I went after the first thing that at the time I was attracted to. It looked good, smelled good, felt good, all of that. So I'm thinking that this must be good for me. Okay, well, if you fast, yeah, fast forward about, you know, mm, three, four months after I found out that this individual is not pregnant, it was like I started to really uncover the roots of this person and mm -hmm. found out that the top of the tree had a dirty beginning and it really wasn't as pretty as I thought it was. Uh, and that led me to learn that before I invest myself, mm -hmm. before you invest yourself into a person, really look at the root of that person. Right. Look at their family. Look at, you know, what they got going on. Listen. What are their values? What are their morals? What are their principles? These you know are what I'm saying? These are grown man questions. And, 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 it may, and, and look, I'm telling you, like, if you just... Dive into those things when you first start to date somebody, you'll really find out whether or not you can waste your time. You know, we go off of, in our course, we go off of vibes and if the vibe look energy. You can vibe well with anybody. Okay? Yes. Anybody can put on a representative and show you a good time. Mm -hmm. But when it get down to the first couple of months. Yeah, in the first couple of I promise. But like when you ask somebody them real life questions like, okay, you know, who do you pray to? Mm -hmm. Uh, where do you want to be in the next two years? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to have a family one day? Uh, mm -hmm. Did your mother raise you? How do you view these different, you know, aspects of relationship, trustworthiness, honesty? Right. You know, talk about that in the beginning because if you put it off to the back end, it's going to bite you in the, in the butt later on. But for me, uh, you know, I had a child. That relationship was real toxic. Got out of that. I'm with the woman I'm with now. But let me tell you about that real quick if you don't mind. Go like, ahead. Cool. No, I so, think the people need to hear Okay, so I'm going to tell on myself. I'm going okay. to tell on myself. So, okay, I had my daughter, uh, two years old. Uh, she's two years old now, finna be three. But in the beginning stages of me being a single father and having my daughter, I was real depressed in a sense of trying to date because I already felt like I wasn't good enough still. Mm -hmm. Man, we feel like that too sometimes. Uh, I had Ladies, moved, listen up. I had moved back into my mother's house. I'm not going to lie because I needed help. She was a nurse, worked on the sat Saturdays and Sundays, so she helped me watch my daughter for so free daycare. It made sense economically mm -hmm. for me to be at home my mother, stacking my money and move out, which I am now, and uh, all of that good jazz. But I was kind of feeling like I was not deserving uh, to go out here and date a woman because I did not have anything that I felt was essential in to, to offer, essentially. I felt like, okay, if I don't have a certain amount of money coming in monthly, if I don't have my own roof over my head, if I'm not driving my own car that I bought, I didn't feel like I was going to be uh, deemed worthy uh, mm. to my fellow black women. I love my black women. They want now. But it's like when you see so many different things on social media mm. of, of women, you know, kind of not necessarily getting on another brother's ass, but in a sense, they're trying to. They, it's like they kind of look down on the brothers that ain't got their stuff together to right. what they perceive as being having their stuff together on house, on car, on this, on that. Mm -hmm. But what I also learned with that mindset. Cause I had to remind myself that I'm deserving of love too. No matter mm -hmm. what phase of life that I'm in, yes, I'm deserving of love. If I pray for it, mm -hmm. and if I know that my intentions are good, I'm. You know what? I'm not gonna go by what society say I should do, but I'm gonna do what I feel God want me to do. 
I'm gonna pursue this woman. I got that woman that I want now. And uh, we rocking good, we doing good, thank God for her. But once upon a time before we got to that point, I didn't feel like I deserved to pursue her. So I didn't. Mm -hmm. And by me kind of trying to talk to her and not really, you know, being consistent, she had blocked me. She blocked me because I had- That's she right, sis. You know what I'm saying? Got time she, no got, she ain't had no time. Ass miss. She didn't have no time. Okay. And, get and, right or get left. And, and with that being said, it's like, I feel like a lot of men are in that place in their life where they feel like they're not enough financially, um, you know, mentally, or even physically. They may feel like they don't look, uh, look like what you're attracted to. So that'll prevent us from trying to further something with you guys. I can only speak for myself, and I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. So I want to say with confidence that I'm sure a lot of other brothers feel that way too. So Now, I almost can, you know, from mm -hmm. a therapist's point of view, mm -hmm. to say that a man can't have insecurities, he can't feel that way. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's just really hard for me to wrap around that you feel less than mm -hmm. because you up a lot of men... Mm -hmm use the dms mm -hmm. like they just they'll send that one message and yeah. send it to like twenty thousand yeah. girls it's true and i'm just like you're not serious you're you're really not serious right because you you're, you don't have a plan and mm -hmm. some of them do not all men yeah. okay yeah. but you don't have a plan you don't even know how to pursue mm -hmm. a woman you know I'm trying to understand like that's why it's hard for me to take a lot of guys seriously because right if you don't what you doing in my DMs, and right. you don't even, you didn't. If I was at the grocery store, you're gonna just walk up to me on aisle eight at the cereal aisle and be like, What you right. doing? No, you all right? <laughs> you all right? Right, right. You know, like, Hello, my name is, or hey, I just thought you were, you know, really beautiful. My name is, and yeah. you know, I hope I'm not coming out wrong or disrespectful, but you know. Can I get your name? Something like that. Tell me. Come talk so to me. So basically, you want to know. Me hum, tell me so, I'm a human. So basically, you want to know why you don't get that, but you get the you all get the lesser, Ooh, which is the you I know, get basic the, I, You at the gas station DMs. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I do holler at you at the gas station. Those are the type of deals I get. And not just. But then a lot of men, and I'm my whole thing is I'm not stroking an ego if you're yeah. not my man. I don't owe you a response. You don't. You don't. No one and does. To your DM, just because you, I might not be in a place today. I might have a man, and I just don't have him on social media. Right. I might have a whole husband out here with kids, and yeah. just because they're not on social media, you think you know my life. You think you know that I'm single, mm -hmm. or that I'm single. I'm obligated to respond to you. Right. I am not. Right. And right. I want to make that completely clear. <laughs> your ego is getting in the way of your living your best life. You mm -hmm. messing up your own self esteem because you feel shot down. But you coming for me in my DM, so. Um, I want to say I know men have insecurities, and I love yeah. them, black men that can express those insecurities. Yeah. But do not project those insecurities. Do not make me feel bad because so you, you feel about self. Yeah. Ooh, I oh, feel, and and I feel like the the root of that I feel comes from mm -hmm. when a individual in this in this sense we're talking about I'm talking about men. I mm -hmm. feel like when men have certain insecurities and we don't verbalize those insecurities and mm -hmm. get past those that's when we project them on other people mm -hmm. it's just like any other uh emotion like mm -hmm. fear uh when someone's fearful of something they'll project their fears onto you you could say i want to start my own food truck business but if i'm fearful of not starting my own business i'll tell you no you can't do that or maybe you should wait or something or like that we project our fears to onto other people yeah yeah stuff like that you know you got to pay taxes Keep it to you yourself. know how you get an LLC, man, the right. process is hard. All of that. And all of that. And that's what happens when guys don't know how to verbalize what, what is wrong with us. Mm -hmm. All of us have some dirt. All of us have some things that we we're not do. proud Ladies, of. We do too. Yeah. Okay. And when we can't effectively get over that, we, we project it on other people. And I think that's all it is, honestly. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. let's go on to our next section. Let's um do it. Why we think um, the black community struggles with being in healthy relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. Um my point of view, if you've seen past videos, I've said this, Ignazium. <sighs> black women and black men mm -hmm. are raised totally different. And that's just, I'm not even just talking about my experience with my household, with my brothers, mm -hmm. but just in general. So, yeah. here we go. We got the black woman, the black mm -hmm. child. We'll start with the black little girl. Okay. The black little girl is given baby dolls, newborn, baby born. True. Okay, easy bake oven, yeah. uh, kitchenettes. Mm -hmm. So you're already grooming us to be like you, a mother, because yeah. you're our mother, okay? Right. But not only are we giving these, you know, womenly things, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. we're also giving Barbie. 
Now, Barbie, man, Barbie's body is just pow, like she's perfect. Perfect. You know, but mm -hmm. not only is her body perfect, mm -hmm. Barbie had a dream car, mm -hmm. dream Jeep. She did. She had a dream house. Mm -hmm. Barbie had a jet. Barbie had a boat. Mm -hmm. Barbie was CEO of Barbie Land. Yeah. But what also did Barbie have? Ken. Ken! Yeah. Listen, because you gotta have, you, how you gonna have a Barbie without Ken? Because your mama wasn't gonna let two dogs be playing together. Like, you gonna make sure you understand that boys yeah. and women both be together. So yeah. she's gonna get you that Ken, mm -hmm. dog. So you're taught that Barbie one superwoman syndrome can have all these things and still be a wife and a mother and be perfect at mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And that you should strive to be. Not once did I ever have a Barbie that went and got a degree from UT. <laughs> or went, like I'm getting my doctors, went, Dr. Barbie, never seen one. Maybe yeah. they have them out there. I didn't get one. Mm -hmm. So everything was through how much money Barbie can bring into her household and how great she can be and her having a man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you instill these in freaking two-year-olds and three-year-olds to seven-year-olds until mm -hmm. we grow out of that. And then we're at this place of thinking about our parents. So what do you start? You get the little lip gloss from Walgreens, you know, mm -hmm. little dollar store lip gloss mm -hmm. or Carmex. And now you're worried about how your lips look. And right. I used to wear braids. Like I, I didn't start wearing weave until I got an undergrad. You got these babies up here with sewing better than mine, wigs better than mine. Yeah. In yeah. middle school and in high school. school. Yeah. So we transitioned from... Um, playing with these things, these stereotypes all day, to now we're becoming these stereotypes. And mm -hmm. now our attention is more on boys at a younger age than boys our own girls. Like, boys too busy being rowdy and rough and playful. They're not thinking about women. And that's how and you can talk more on that. Boys are raised differently. Mm -hmm. They're at, in eighth grade, girls are thinking about, oh, he's so cute. I'm going to send him this letter. Like, send him, well, this text now. They mm -hmm. use Google Chat now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send him this Google Chat, whatever, mm -hmm. kick, okay. whatever. Yeah. And boys are just like, man, you want to go play football? Man, you want to go to the gym? Yeah. You want to go? Like, we're raised differently. Their concern is not about dating. So when we're 25 and 28 years old thinking, why are these dudes still not on top? No, they're not ready. Mm -hmm. They were never reared to be ready at the we time weren't. we're ready. We weren't. And our eggs are drying up and shriveling up. And it's like, <sighs> we're told to date older. This is what happened. And then your mother and your grandmother started telling you, oh, you need to just date an older man. Why do I got to date Sanford and son to be ready to get married and have kids? Because he ready at that age. Mm -hmm. And I am I got to get with somebody that's ready if I want to get married now instead of marrying someone my own age. And growing with him. And growing with him. He going to die before, like, he like a Bernie Sanders. He going to die before he get in office. Yeah. Like, yeah. before we hit the one year. No child. No. <laughs> okay. It's hard. It is hard. It's not it's, fair. It's the, not. It's stacked up against us from the beginning. It is. I mean, like you said, women, young girls, little boys, definitely raised differently. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of, lot more free range given to me as a young boy versus my sisters. My sisters were always catty towards one another, and I wasn't. I peeped that. I'm like, well, mama said wash the dishes, and they arguing one another. Let me just go do it so I can get what I wanted to do. I was always thinking <laughs> logically mm -hmm. as from yay high on up. I mean, that's just how boys are. women are logical. I didn't say that. I just said I thought more logically than my siblings did. I'm trying correction. to game So, yeah, look, look, so... Growing up, for me, uh, I didn't hang around a whole bunch of dudes growing up. I had my little crew, my cousins and them. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really didn't even start really taking notice to women like that until we got to like middle school. Like you mm -hmm. said, with the little love notes, this, that, and the other. We really finding out what catch a girl, get a girl is outside, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, little <laughs> stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, it was cool. It was innocent. Now, when you get to high school, mm -hmm. everything changed for me. Okay. Now, I ain't going to even talk about the babies now because they having sex like what? Oh, I had 12, like five pregnant ninth know. graders at the school. I yeah. Was so five. times have definitely changed. Yes. But what I will say for me, I didn't see a whole bunch of early, like my on my peer group, we didn't, I didn't see a whole bunch of pregnancies until we got to like, until high school. Mm -hmm. Now for them, and as far as the dynamics of, you know, how I was growing up as a boy in high school, mm -hmm. um, ninth grade was cool. You know, I was trying to talk to this girl, that girl. Wasn't really too focused on the sex part. Mm -hmm. But my other guy friends, my mm -hmm. associates, I'll say that word, associates cannot, everybody not your friend. Mm -hmm. But there, we talking in a group at lunch or in band or whatever the case may be, and we talking about, okay, well, I had this uh, sexual encounter with this girl, or I did this, or man, she did he this, or this, this is that. 
It, and it could have been a lot. Very well could have been. But because everybody in the circle had a story to tell, and I didn't, I felt obviously talked about, you know, check. We're talking about roasting, whatever flame, whatever you want to call it. I was kind of talked about, you know what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. I, hadn't, I hadn't experienced that yet. Mm -hmm. So I felt the pressure, peer pressure, if you will, from my peers to go out and do something with the girl I was talking to at the time mm -hmm. so that I'd have a story to tell. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of us, we felt like we had the over masculine. I'm trying to find the right word. Overly masculine? Over, I might have made yeah, it up. Yeah. Hey, even if it's made up where we understand what we're saying. We yeah. felt like we had to be too grown too quick as, me, as young Ooh, men. Say that again. Uh, we had, I felt like we had, a lot of us had to be too grown too quick because too of peer pressure quick. or whatever the case may be. Some people, unfortunately, I, I know some guys where the babysitter, you know, Hey, touched them. Touched them. But they at the time we it thinking it's cool. Like it didn't seem thing. like a bad thing. But now that we got older, you realize, okay, you was thirteen. Can we say trauma? And she was eighteen and that started you on a path that made Being you overly sexualized. Overly sexualized. There you go. And I feel like as men, like it's a it's 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 important to us. Like I feel like sex is more important to us than it is to y'all. Mm -hmm. The older we get, a woman's sex drive increases for mm -hmm. natural reasons and uh we start to slow down. But even to me to this day, like sex is very important. But in, let me talk on my singleness. I'll, I'll put it out there so it's just straight, raw, uncut. Like in my singleness, like like most of us, like I was a sex, I was sexually active as well. You know, I always played it safe, this, that, and the other. I always got checked, you know, right after switching partners, all that, keeping it safe, keeping it cool. But Jim. for me, I told myself in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, if, this, if the sex is not to this standard, I'm not going to even think about Time, time so myself down out? to get with that person. If if the sex was just horrible, wow. I would I would absolutely not try to pursue anything further. Even I don't care if you're the baddest of the baddest. So I'm attracted to you to the T. If the sex was slow, I said no. And I'm not the it's only a, guy. Look, it was a wrap. It if was a wrap. Sex, look, sex was slow. I said, said no. no. And, okay. and and I'm not the only brother. Laces, I'm not the only brother. I'm not the only brother. Chapter only, 12. Look, yeah. I'm not the only brother to think that way. <laughs> and we can't think that way. And Chris, uh, I want to say Chris Rock said this in a comedy skit one time. He said, you know, men and women are different, but women can't go back in their lifestyle, whereas men cannot go back sexually mm -hmm. for the women. If you remember when you first dated a guy that had his first car, you told yourself, I'll never talk to another brother that ain't got a car again. Okay, fast forward. You got to college. You met your first brother, got his apartment. You told yourself, I'll never talk to another dude that ain't got his own car and his own place. All right, let's fast forward. You get your first guy to take you out of the country. You told yourself, this is some I out of the country poo that I ain't never talking to another <laughs> brother that ain't got a car, apartment, Look, and can fly me out. Passport. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Now, us guys, okay? Remember the first girl that you, uh, you know, you fingered or whatever back in the day? You told yourself, I ain't never talked to another girl unless she let me finger. Okay, cool. Fast forward. You remember the first girl that ever, you know, went downtown on you and everything. You know what? You told yourself, you ain't never talking to nobody else that don't get down there and handle everything. So it's like, if we get with somebody, cause we more sexual, we sexual and visual creatures. So it's like, of course, what I see has to attract me. What I see mm -hmm. first attracts me. And then it's about all about how I feel. If I like what I see, I'm going to naturally pursue it. And then if it doesn't make me feel and get me to a, a high that I've been before, it's like I'm I'm not personally trying to further it into nothing else because first it's visual, then it's sexual, and then it's like we're more so concerned about, okay, your your morals, your values, yeah. where you're going at in life. And Why is that, that on the back end, though? Like, it seems like it's all about lust, 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 lust. Mm -hmm. Why is it back then? That's it. Like, I mean, it's all about, like... I'm thinking about what you were saying just mm -hmm. as far as like mm -hmm. guys like having I wouldn't talk to nobody that I did that didn't do this to me mm -hmm. anymore after they've had that encounter. It's mm -hmm. just like guys are just driven by lust. I understand because what you said, like you made it a clear point when you mm -hmm. said like some guys, you know, are molested at a very young age and that mm -hmm. impacts how they are sexually. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder like what about the girls? Like some it's either with girls that can be that are like say we'll say molested. Mm -hmm. Um usually they are like they don't wanna deal with things. Yeah. Like it's it's yeah. more of a traumatic experience yeah. and I feel like does a lot of media play a part in it? Because why is it that women will react to sexual trauma different than men? And although I might know therapeutically, I'm trying to get his opinion on mm -hmm. that. I think that it's because you all are victimized for those things happening to y'all from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, ridiculed for it. Whereas mm -hmm. for us guys, it's praised. If not from the old heads, it's, it's praised amongst even peers. Even like fathers and, and uncles. And even fathers and uncles and things like that. It's praised when we are out there and we, you know, because in a sense, it's like the older guys are kind of living through us vicariously. Mm -hmm. It's like for the old heads the and, and the ones too. that are married to, it's mm -hmm. like they get to live their life. And me too, when I have a son, my son will be able to, I'm, in a sense, I will live through my son. He is my seed. Okay, but, uh, Simba. Yeah, it's like, it's like he'll get to do things and I will help him do things that mm -hmm. I wish I had uh, my own father uh, there to be able to do mm -hmm. for me. Versus, like, for instance, like, I didn't have nobody coach me through, you know, okay, what needs of a woman that you need to cater to when it comes time for you to start dating? When you get your first mm -hmm. car, make sure you open up a door. Make sure you always be respectful. Listen before you re respond or react to anything. Take your time. Like, don't react. Try to respond appropriately. Mm -hmm. Little stuff like that, you know, I want to be able to coach my son to that. We didn't have that, so it's like, I didn't have it. So, with that being said, it's like, I really don't know. I just think y'all women are condemned when it comes to y'all sexual experiences. I mean, just like, are. have you seen that video that went kind of viral with the dad that whooped the 12 year old that he caught having sex? Mm -mm. You didn't see that? Well, it's, I try it's, to stay it's away viral. From things that's gonna I try to stay away from that too, but I saw a snippet of it and I'm like, she's 12 year old. Okay, you caught her having sex. But if it were me, I wouldn't have whooped her first off and, then on and camera, showed it on camera. Like, what, what see, point I, are you trying to I would have seen I would report that. Yeah, me too. Okay. I'm like, mandated reporter. Everybody in Tennessee is a mandated reporter. Make sure if y'all see child abuse, you got to report it. Got to. I'm like, why do we do that? Why do we whoop our daughters for having but sex? But you going to high-five your son. High-five your son. I'm like, yes, yeah, my daughter can get pregnant, but your son can get somebody pregnant. Right, but so it's if, like the responsibility is just not saying the same. Like, he could still, like, mm -hmm. men are taught they can still live their life mm -hmm. even if they get a girl pregnant. You can still go out to college, what? Yeah. It is more so like the woman is seen to one stay with her child and be with mm -hmm. her child, which I feel like that's a whole another video for a whole another day of Agreed. why why we gotta be the ones to stay home with our child. Like why can't we be the breadwinners? Why can't we go out there? Mm -hmm. I know some people have their opinions, so I right, right. keep my unpopular opinion right. to myself. So we went over that black mm -hmm. women are raised differently than black men. Yeah. Um, that's one reason why we struggle uh, with relationship within the black community with mm -hmm. each other. The next one was like social media. Social media, okay, we talk about. It. Okay, so uh -huh. allowing people in your business and trying to compare your relationship okay. to other people's relationship. Okay. I mean, I'm single, so I probably won't say too much on it, but I feel like people post stuff about their relationship in hopes for validation that they have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, honestly, if you're living in a happy relationship, you're too busy being happy in a relationship that every little step you make and every little breath you take mm -hmm. don't have to be on Post social, social media. media. Like some, and I, my women, I'm coming for you for one second, the ones that sometimes you use your, your title as a wife as like a validation for your purpose. Like I've achieved it. So everything is like my husband this and my husband that. It's me and my husband and oh my God. And it's just like, Sis, I'm happy for you, but are you happy with yourself? Like, you are more than the role of a wife. You mm. are more than you got his last name. Like, mm. you are more, talk about your business or mm. talk about your goals or talk about something that does not involve having to attach your husband to that. Because although y'all are as one, that's for your marriage. That is, you got more to life to me than mm. just you don't need validation from the world for everything y'all do but okay some women need it yeah hey, some some men need it too like for me i'm a big social media person like and i've yes. always, I always have been and for me it did something for me uh more so than me trying to get like the validation from my peers and what i mean by that is this like if i'm in a relationship with a woman mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna change my profile picture to me and that woman uh, I want the world to know, and that's just me. And not saying it's now right. Not, why. Okay, the why not for bad, me. But yeah, the why. for me, I want people that come to my personal page to know. Number one, I'm with a woman. The older I get, I've realized the more bolder women are, and they'll you know message you and let you know what they where they what they want and where they coming from. They don't care if you're in a relationship or not. Like, and it gets so, even. 
Yeah, so even with the picture, do you still get those to happen sometimes? Yes, I do. And so, I told my woman about this too, like it just happens. And she still gets messages from guys. I mean, but she's right. a woman. I expect her to get DMs even after we've been married 10 plus years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? True. And um, I just like the world to know what I'm on. So I don't want my woman to feel like I'm hiding her because I've been in situations before where a person feel like, oh, well, if you don't post me, uh, what are you hiding? To why alleviate, is that a I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. But for me, yeah, for me personally, not. my reason for doing it, I want the world to see what I'm on. It's kind of like if I got uh, a brand new Rolex. If I ever get a Rolex in my life, y'all gonna see it every picture. I'm just, but it's like I'm just, I like to showcase <laughs> my woman. I like to showcase my woman. I like, you know, that's just me. You I know, it's completely. I guess yeah. with me, I'm just like you don't have to show everything. You ain't gotta I post don't, everything. And I agree. I agree. You only post because like you want other people to see it and that's really? co that's completely fine mm. if that's for you for me i my personal life is not up for discussion i'm not right. selling tickets to my personal life true, true. like if i have dated guys and i might have posted like one picture maybe about mm -hmm. two years ago mm -hmm. but it's really i'm just i'm again i'm not selling tickets to a show right. my my marriage especially when mm -hmm. i get married again is it's me. yours it's yes, not probably, gonna yeah. be up for discussion it's not gonna be up for um, for what you have to say about it. If mm -hmm. I do share it, it'll be on my own thing, like or my me wanting to just share this moment. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I I feel like it's okay to have something to you close see. to yeah. you, something surprise. Like I just right now, I might change, and y'all can pull back this video and say I said it, and I change my mind. I don't. When I have a child, I just really don't see myself putting my child on social media. Oh, uh, wait till you have. You want to hold it? You never know. I don't yeah. want other people posting my child. Like, yeah. if my if my womb is still hanging out, goddamn, yeah. excuse me, I don't want my child on <laughs> your social media before I e y e i even have a chance to introduce my child to the world. Like everything is, I get in a car accident, I gotta put it on social media. I'm yeah, I don't understand that. I gotta be on social media. Yeah, I don't understand. I just that. gave birth and my head, wig is sideways. I gotta put it on social media. I'm like. Yeah. You ain't got to put everything out there. I do agree. But you, I want to add something else. Another reason, my why, well, another reason why I make sure I post and praise mm -hmm. my woman on social media is so that other brothers can be understand that it's okay to celebrate they woman. Okay. That's I, that, I will say that. I, I say that too. That. Like, I, make sure, I will take that. I try, to, I try to say certain things and do certain things. It's for my woman, but it's also for the people that see me. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say look up to me, mm -hmm. but for the people that see my lifestyle and what I have going as a father, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, as a head of a household, things example. of that. Lead by example. You know, it's okay to praise your woman publicly. It's okay to, you know, praise your woman on social media. You ain't got to hide everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm just trying to be an example. You know, even not only to, not just to other people, but to my my kids as well. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay to praise your woman. It's okay to you know celebrate her. You know, I, it ain't got to be I, every day, but you know, every now I and again, yeah. And I receive that. Mm -hmm. Um, also, but it's like I follow you on social media, so mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's you trying to like demand the world mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um that hey, yeah. come see me and my yeah, yeah, my yeah. woman. It's nah. it, it's like natural and yeah. authentic. I think sometimes I see some people and I be like, it's just too much. It's just. When it gets Are you like, authentically yeah. happy yeah. and you this happy? I want you to be this happy, but it's not coming off as authentic. But again, the whole purpose of why I said social media is destroying is not aiding in us having a healthy relationship because we have people like me that feel like everything doesn't have to be posted. I need a man that's okay that I might not, I might want to post your Jordan or your hand. I might not want to post you. Mm -hmm. And then you have some people that's just like, I want to be your woman crush Wednesday every day. And I'm like, we can't wear this shouldn't even be a stuff. conversation it's, 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 it really can should. we talk about investing in stocks and bonds and getting a house and you know being traveled well traveled at that like mm -hmm. why we let the smallest things impact whether something is a good relationship or not to us and social media should not be a determinant of whether this person is good for you i agree i do agree okay and another thing of course mm -hmm. that we know that makes it hard for us to be in a relationship in our community with each other is not healing from past traumas or hurts. Okay. Okay, Let's so talk about it. Let's talk ooh. about it. Yep. This I had right a past now. unhealthy relationship. We all have. I all got right. daddy and mama issues that okay. I, well, I had them. Okay. Okay, so it impacted how I because my mom is very strong, but my, my mom was cursed a, a, a man out. Mm -hmm. So I had the mentality of how I treated my significant right. other. I would curse your ass out. Right. You know? Yeah. Um 
with my past relationship, mm -hmm. I was very, I can say that I was very disrespectful, you know? Because mm -hmm. if you did something to hurt me, you oh. Right, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah, I listen. Got I got you. Listen. Okay. I it, I played for keeps. Mm -hmm. I was gonna hurt you because you hurt me, mm -hmm. and it was so unhealthy. But it was passed down. It right. was normalized for me. I didn't know I had an issue. Right. You know right. he wasn't perfect. I can only be accountable for what I did. Every action that he did should not have gotten a reaction. The reaction that I gave him. Right. So if you're not healed, leave that person. Now do not come disrupting someone else's peace. Someone else's. You know, their energy with mm -hmm. your spirits. Mm -hmm. Go get your healing. Go get to therapy. Healing. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a therapist, but also I have a great therapist. I had to work through my work through my crap so I can be happy with myself. Because if I were to get a man prior to this, I was still not gonna be happy because I used to think that I needed a man for validation because that's how I was raised. I needed a man and I was gonna be happy. Like whatever hurts that I had for my husband or whatever, mm. I, I it was gonna go away because I was gonna have a man on my arm, you mm. know. And it was just like, I will, if you are not happy with yourself and you haven't dealt with your own stuff, no, right? It's still gonna be unhappy, and you gonna make him unhappy. That's true. And I want to piggyback off of what you said because men too, I can only account for myself, and I'm sure I'm not the only person to feel this way. So I want to say I speak for other men as well. Um, I too felt that if I had a relationship, I felt like the insecurities that I had, and I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I feel like they were kind of. What's the word I'm looking for? It was like I felt self-validation mm -hmm. being in a relationship because I'm like, surely if this one person likes me, surely I'm enough, mm -hmm. if you get where I'm coming from. Ooh. So with that being said, a lot of us, I feel, feel that if we're in a relationship, once if we get marriage, if we get the ring, uh, if we get that man, if we get that yeah. woman, we feel like all of our problems will wash away, kind of like what you mentioned mm -hmm. too. A lot, and why do we feel that way? Let's look at the root. Why do we feel like, okay, well, if I get a man or if I get a woman, that all of my problems will just go away? What I think, and I could be wrong, Please. I think that a lot of us feel that way because of what she had mentioned. You know, grew up seeing an unhealthy relationship. Not saying that the relationship was just, just terrible, but when we see broken relationships, certain traits are passed down to us and we tell ourselves okay when it come my turn i ain't gonna be like that i'm gonna be better blah 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 the person that you told yourself you would never end up like you end up trying to you you, pre that you portray family member. that family member you say you'll never be like them but you end up catching some of their personality traits and you and start exhibiting that in relationships and you don't see it that somebody pointed out sometimes it takes you reaching rock bottom for you to get to a point where you can start to climb up like myself um i had to go through and really go through a relationship that was a good relationship, good woman, but I had to see the ugly side of me in order to fix that ugly side of me so that I can get to where I am at now. I, I saw a post one time that said the most challenging relationship is the relationship right after you got out of your toxic relationship because it's like your own edge already going into the relationship. You have already told yourself, if this person coughed the wrong way, blinked the wrong Man, way, listen, uh, too don't, hops, too they, hops to the left, like, they don't respond to my message uh, in an adequate amount I'm of time, not dealing with this mess. I'm not dealing with this mess no more. You're not even reacting off of emotion at this point. You're reacting off of experience. And someone else is being punished for what for someone else did. And it's like, I'm about to kick off my shoes and shout. I'm telling you, and it's like, when, where, when can work, at what point do we get to a point where we're truly able to get back out there on the market and really pursue somebody else? It's what she said. You have to heal your own wounds before you look for somebody else to be a band-aid to your life. Being with somebody will never fix you. Ever. Being with nobody, being with somebody in your thirties, your forties, your fifties will never fix the stuff that happened to Having you when you were 10, 20, 30. It's not gonna help you. It's not gonna help you. It's not gonna heal you. It's not gonna heal you. Oh, this this baby will love me forever. You know how many yeah. kids I done had? No, baby. Mm -hmm. he, the, he gonna love you. If you love that baby, that baby will love you. But the what you still need on the inside, you mm -hmm. still have to do the work. And we try to skip. We try to find every way mm -hmm. to skip doing the work. And that's the, that's it. We live in this society where it's like if we don't get instant gratification right Mac there. Mac will wave a society. There you go. It's we like a hot and quit. ready. Uh, little Caesar's pizza. Yeah. You want it hot and ready in five minutes and it's like. It don't work that way. It's not no. realistic. It's not realistic. And I had to realize that for myself. Like once upon a time. I just went off of the physical. I wanted my flesh to be pleased, this, that, and other. But I knew that ain't the way God wanted me to live. Right. I knew that's not the way I wanted to live. Mm -hmm. And now that you add a whole child into the picture, mm -hmm. everybody's situation different. Mm -hmm. But for me, yeah, I like seeing the girls that wear the dresses that's like this. I like seeing the girls that, you know, live this certain type of lifestyle, getting flown out this in Jamaica you and over here in New Orleans and Atlanta. 
I like seeing women live their best life. Men like seeing women live with a smile on their face. You know what I'm saying? I like seeing it. Mm -hmm. But I had to realize that everything I like is not what I needed. And and, and I, that's what I had to differentiate. What do I want versus what I need? I had to hit that rock bottom in my own personal life for me to sit down, put it on paper. Okay, this is what I need. This is what I want, but this is what I right. need. And I had to really t ask myself, what do I really value? What do I really want in a woman? Do what I want are your a core beliefs? What are my core beliefs? What are my core values? Mm -hmm. Why do I want this relationship? When I get into my next relationship, what am I going to do different? Not even focusing on what she can do and what I expect for her to do. What am I going to do different? Because I told myself that my next relationship is going to be my last relationship. And that was just me. And the advice that I feel like I can pass down to other women, other men, mm -hmm. Is that when it when it comes to you dating, you need to make sure if you're serious about dating and if you're serious about your next relationship being your last relationship, yes, you need to put it on the table. Y'all need to put it on the table and really figure out if if either if both of y'all have gotten to that rock bottom part yet. Mm -hmm. If one of you have gotten to that rock bottom part and is ready to settle down versus the other one that just got out of school per se, just got their first real job, just got their first apartment, and hasn't really experienced you know being out in the world to themselves. Mm -hmm. Y'all might have some issues because this person may have saw their life going a certain way, having whoever over, mm -hmm. going out whenever, not wanting to be considered of someone else's time, not wanting to be considered of someone else's feelings. Mm -hmm. Really put it on the table and figure out, okay, is this person on the same page as me? If they're not on the same page with you, with your morals, with your beliefs, with your situation, let them go. Let them go. Don't even try to hold That's like water yeah. trying to hold on to a flame. It's not going to work. You have to meet somebody where you're in in your life. Like I said, everybody's situation is different. Equally yoked. Equally yoked. You don't yoked. say that for nothing in the Bible. It don't take getting married to figure that out, neither. You figure that out on the first couple of days, honestly. Listen, yeah. if, you, if you're if you bold enough to have those real conversations and think, mm -hmm. oh, if I ask him this, he's not going to want to talk to me. I want to scare him off. Like, we're taught to not ask certain questions on the first day. Don't treat it like it's an interview. What? Because we'll, we're, we'll, scare, we'll scare him off. And I'm like, who taught y'all that? Thank God. But, you know, it's just generational curse trying to break so mm. my thing is okay. i didn't hold on to that i'm like if he gets scared of yeah. he was not mine there you go yeah. he's not mine he's, not yours, he's yeah. he, good i want you to be scared out because you either gonna say oh i want to root my roots in this woman and mm -hmm. i want her or yeah. nah she's scared me. you know how i can show you a text message now like someone saying that i scared them like you scare me not scared like terrified but because you're so gold driven because you know what you want because you got your finance together I know I don't bring that to the table. Okay, well, like the Bible says, good. I'm glad you know. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. They was too dull for you in the first place, and I mean, I, I get it. I get it. Okay, y'all. Yeah. So sorry, camera cut off, and I know this is already becoming a very lengthy, or it became a very lengthy video, which is really good. Yeah. You know, we're hoping that you guys are getting all the information you need, and you're enjoying. Uh, me having my first guest. So we're going to just wrap it up with this last point. We were talking about how to move forward um, in healthy relationship with each other. Like, how can we do it? We started talking about healing traumas, being healing from your trauma before you go and disrupt someone else's life. Mm -hmm. But also, my thing is stop allowing the media to pit us against each other. Um, it's a lot of times I will see black men and black women have deba debates about, like, stuff that really you shouldn't be discussing with other people, like your finances. Like, this whole thing about who goes half on rent? Why Why are you asking social media? Or why are you letting social media know that you, if you and your man decide to go half and half on the rent, you pay all the rent, he pay all the car, no. Who cares? It's your house. So stop allowing that. And, you know, it's also like, you know, I love Meg Stallion. I love City Girls. You know, I love their music. You know, I'm so glad that they are, you know, they live in their skin. But this hot girl summer stuff, like, now men are mad because women talk about they having a hot girl summer and now they want to have a city girl summer. Stop allowing the media to pit us against each other. If you want to be sexually fluid and whatever else in the capacity that you want to, let it be on your own accord, not because it's a phase or a fad, you know? Mm -hmm. I do agree. I feel like, you know, like you said, for us to move forward positively, I feel like we have to heal from past traumas, like you said. Um... I feel like as men, I feel like we should take the weight off of ourselves where, where we feel like we're not worthy to date you all. Um, a lot of us feel like if we don't have the money that we won't be valued. Uh, I do, I want to say that I am wrong. I have posted stuff like that before in the past where I'm like, who's paying rent and this, that, and the third. But 
I just do that to really just stir the pot sometimes. I don't do it no more. So you're pitting black I, men I, against black women? No, not necessarily, but okay. I just like to see different viewpoints on where they think things should go in the um, in the home. Most um, time, women going to agree with women and men are going to agree with men, which mm -hmm. that's why I say it causes us to be against each other. Too much tension already. It's so don't already, even stir the pot. Yeah. you know, so it's just like, yeah, if yeah. we're not aiding to bring our community right. together, I'm don't definitely not going to be yeah. aiding and you're pulling right, them apart. Right. You know, and that's just, it took me a while. I used to post stuff like that. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I might, yeah. you know, post a little uh, <laughs> yeah. subliminal uh, meme here and there, mm -hmm. all out of good fun. But I, I'm really taking note of like what I add to it mm -hmm. because I want women to have healthy relationship with black men. I right. want that for us, mm -hmm. but I also want women to have healthy relationship with themselves True. and not put their worth in if they have a man or not. Right? You know, we we don't need a man to validate us. True. We need a man to procreate. There like, you go. And I, I mean, I want a man. I I want a more so. I want you here. I want to share my life with you. I want you to share my experience with you. But I don't need to share right. my experience with you. I'm going to be happy by myself, right. regardless. And to add to that, I think one thing you also could add is that I want you to want to be around. Mm -hmm. uh, some people do it for other reasons, but do it for me. Don't do it for the kids. You know, be with me because you want to be with me. Uh, for the brothers out there, I encourage you to pursue that woman. If you have gotten to a position in your life where you feel like you want to create a family, don't feel ashamed for bringing it up when you go take these women out on dates. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you're less than. Uh, you're, not you're not less than. You know what I'm saying? You're a grown man. You are your own man. You are not your father. You're not your uncle. You're not your brothers. You're not your, your guy friends. Uh, it takes separation for you to elevate in your life. Yes. You're, you will have to separate from the people that are close to you to get closer to that next stage that God has for you. And I truly do believe that I'm living testimony that I had to let go of some people in order to get where I am now. And I've been blessed. Credit score going up. My hair line is uh, coming back. Thank you know what I'm saying? Jesus. My skin popping. I'm exfoliating my skin, Lord. Uh, you know, things like that. You know, good things come to those that, you know, separate you, elevate. And I encourage my brothers to go out, date these women. You know, be intentional, be genuine. Don't feel like you gotta Love put up a us. front. You know what I'm saying? Because everything that we could possibly want from them on a sexual, uh, you know, plane, okay, yeah, that's cool, but that's not what's gonna sustain. It's that mental connection, that vibe, it's that that bond. Like that's what's gonna build when you be when a woman can depend on you, respect you, and know that, that you're gonna be consistent. Like that's when you get the best of that woman. Be consistent, be respectful, be dependable. That and that's what I'm gonna teach my sons. Like be that, just be yourself. You don't. You ain't got to be nothing else that you see on social media. What you think she might like, just be yourself, mm -hmm. and that's the best advice I can give anybody. It's work for me, and I'm sure it'll work for you. All right, and there you have it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. Man, tuning in to another episode of XDI with Shade. I hope you guys really enjoyed. It. Please leave your comments down below as far as you know what you feel about how hard it might be dating, or maybe some successful dating stories. You know, we love to hear the positive and not think that it's all just one way. Right. Um, follow your girl on all her social media platforms at Diablo Shada. You're on YouTube, so just go ahead and subscribe. Press the well. button. There just click go. like. It takes 1.5 seconds. Go ahead and do that. Um, follow our Facebook page at Diablo Shada and Instagram if you want to see a little more into my personal life at Diablo Shada. And how about you just go ahead and drop your you know handles so they can follow you. Okay. And then Instagram. That's all I have. And that's all I really promote at Cross on the Shad. I do events on the side. Got a little knockabout thing. If you in Memphis, see me at the hey. Delta Fair. All of that good stuff. So thank y'all again for watching. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you guys on another episode of Exiabla Shade. Bye. All right.